Hello friends, welcome to Desi Plaza TV. I'm very excited today to welcome Willie Doctor, affectionately known to all of us as Mother or Ma. That's, that's the sense she gives us every time we meet her. Uh, spiritually known as Satyavati Ma, who is a psychologist, an educationist, a philanthropist, and a spiritual teacher. With over three decades of practice, observation, and teaching, she has perfected a simple and effective method of meditation. Traveling across the globe, she imparts this knowledge and has helped thousands of speakers. Vilima has multiple degrees and was the head of the psychology department in Sophia College, Mumbai, in India. With a master's in psychology, with a doctoral studies in the subject of psychobiological change through meditation, a founder and director of Satyavati Spiritual Foundation, the founder and chairperson and managing trustee of the Light of Life Trust in India, an NGO with a primary objective to educate and prepare the underprivileged children for, under, for employment, you can imagine how, what, a, what an enlightened soul Vilima is, and I'm so excited to have her here with me. Her commitment to her work has led her to start the Satyavati Spiritual Foundation in 2009 with the objective of creating an organization dedicated to meditation, counseling, and healing. So welcome, Ma. Thank you very much, Roli, for that wonderful introduction. And I'm really very happy to be here in Dallas and sharing this pure knowledge with everybody. So. Uh, Wonderful, and, and, and we, we cannot wait. So, so let me ask you a couple of, of uh, questions to kick this off. Um, what is your worldview of meditation? Take us through your journey of how you got here. And, and uh, you know, what does meditation mean? Help us understand that. My journey began 30 years ago, and I was a seeker trying to find answers to questions like, what is the purpose of this life? Why am I here? And what is my mission? And through meditation, I found that I was here to really bring peace and to alleviate poverty. And those were the two missions that I had to work for. So my journey actually started when I met my guru, my master, and she told me that it is inward that you have to really move and it is therefore the inner space that you have to explore and see all the wealth is within you just search and you shall find it and that's how all the answers got slowly revealed to me and today i just have to put my attention on any question and it just works out the answer pops up <laughs> and as it were. we're all so blessed that we're going to be seeing that you know in, in coming sunday uh learning the the art of of all, a lot of this so uh, that that's very deep just a simple thing that you have to look inwards but that's a very deep thought yes. and a very simple thought if somebody just takes that moment to understand the meaning behind it right Today, we have really become um, so driven by things that are happening in the environment outside of us that we seek happiness, peace, all the possible stress-related relaxation avenues on the outside. We're not really looking in. We need to really go inwards and find that peace which is there within us. And meditation is the technique. It is a technology that truly helps you to attain that. And so I have innovatively created this Satya meditation, which is a very simple technique. It is fun to practice and at the same time very inspirational in nature because some of the adventures that you have on this journey are fascinating and mind-blowing and it would be great for someone to really start this as an experiment in their lives and see where this journey takes them and 
truly, I would really wish that everybody starts meditating so and finds this peace. Wonderful. So it, you, you started answering one of my questions, but I'd like to explore it a little further. How is Satya meditation different? There is a lot of meditation that is out there, and, and you know, different people are already probably going through different forms of, of uh, trying it. So how is it different in your sense here? Satya meditation, as I said, is simple and it is scientific. So it is based on your central nervous system and awakening the primordial energy, which is the major energy which helps us to connect with the universal energy. And it is through the practice of Awakening this energy, which is in Sanskrit referred to as the Kundalini Shakti or Kundalini energy. And this energy then, when it moves through the seven important nerve centers which are there in our body, it connects with the cosmic energy or the universal energy or the life force, whatever you want to call it. And this energy then completes the circuit for us and takes us to a level of consciousness which is zero thoughts, mm. just no thoughts at all. So that silence, that stillness, that space really which you create within you is what meditation is. So meditation, you could operationally define as a zero state, a state of consciousness where there are zero thoughts. Yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. truly amazing. Yeah, when I understand that, it seems simple, but it is something that has to be achieved. And, yes, it has to be experienced. Towards. Yes. Because if I tell you to sit and do not think, that's going to be impossible for you. Yes. But with this, you move into it spontaneously, naturally, and you don't even realize that suddenly all the thoughts have disappeared. And it's almost a magical state. So how is it different then from just concentration, relaxation? Uh, some people might say just thinking not much, but you know, keeping it calm or even self hypnosis. Good question. Meditation is very frequently misunderstood as relaxation or it is just a pranayam or a breathing technique or it is confused with deep concentration and focus on a mantra or it is very frequently thought of as a trance-like transcendental state. But meditation is not that. Meditation is a state where there are no thoughts. It's just that complete peace of mind which you attain and that is what meditation. And this form of meditation, you first receive your self-enlightenment. So at the very first day, you get the highest gift which is enlightenment, self-realization. And then you work backwards to actually strengthen and keep this state of mind at all times. So the goal is to stay in that state of mind at all times. And also this form of meditation, there is no expense. I don't charge anything for it. So, because you cannot really charge anyone for breathing, for teaching someone to breathe, right? This is almost like that. It's so natural, so spontaneous, only it needs to be awakened. And once this energy is awakened, it works out beautifully within you 
and it creates that inner self-healing and an empowerment where all the potentials that you're born with begin to get realized. So it is a process which is fulfilling and gives you true joy from within. So it's peace, joy and as a result of that compassion and love starts flowing. And so meditation is a many splendor. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, yes. it sounds wonderful. Yeah. So then, then I, I can't wait to ask you this, how does one get started with this meditation that leads us, leads me, leads everybody who's listening in to that state? The first time when you're just starting this journey, it has to be practiced with a person who is self-realized. So it is like one candle lighting the other candle. And the first time when you meditate together, you can even do it in a group. You don't have to do it one on one. And it would be the knowledge that is passed on as well as the practice that is recreated and everyone experiences this. And it may be an audience of a thousand people or it may be ten, it may be just one on one and people really receive this and they know that they have received their self-realization because they can experience it. So, a so, couple of questions along that, just, just more sort of thoughts and curiosities. What, is there a best time of day to meditate? What is a best posture maybe? Is there one? Um, some people ask about, uh, you know, should they close their eyes, open their eyes? So what are your thoughts around that? Yes, all these process oriented questions are interesting. The time of the day, the best time is 4 a.m. <laughs> But if I tell people about that, they're all going to run away because nobody's <laughs> going to wake up at four in the morning to meditate. So whatever time you wake up, I would say wake up about 15 minutes, 20 minutes before that and just freshen up, sit down and peacefully for 10 minutes, put your attention on the process and go through it and experience that silence. So that I think is the best and the posture is I think you don't have to really sit in either Shavasan or Sukhasan or any asans which many people today are unable to really make it. So you could sit on a chair but the most important parameter is that your spine should be erect and your head should be in a position where you do not feel its weight. So this is the postural requirement for the ascent of your energy. That's all that is really required. Have I answered your Yes, you question? have, but just things that always were curious for me, so I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> Small things, but, yes. but they, they help clarify yes. a lot of Yeah, doubts. a lot of people ask me whether I'd be, you know, standing on my head because I don't think I can do that. <laughs> yes, it's just, <laughs> So know, it's nothing like that. It's so somewhere, yes. it's, a, it's a thought. <laughs> um, so is, is, in your mind, is meditation, uh, connected with a religion or is there a, you know an alignment there a lot of people have fallacies around that as well yes so if you could elaborate yes meditation as I said is based on a scientific paradigm and it has got nothing to do with any specific religion so everybody can meditate any religion any age group any community in the world can realize this potential which is there within us 
and everyone is born with that potential. So it is a universal experience and it is within everybody's reach. I know three-year-olds who meditate beautifully and I know those who are 90 and plus also receive the same benefits. So it's nothing to do with age, it's nothing to do with religion and the sex of the person as well. <laughs> it's not that it is a male dominant uh, I'm glad experience. You, <laughs> I'm glad you said that because you know many of you thought you'd probably come up with more questions around it but that's great and how about we take a quick short break here and be right back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 